In this video today, I'm going to show you how to get from this to NS Cancel. Yes, right now. Hey, happy doing everyone. This is David from Media Box ENT. In this video today, I'm going to show you how you get the Raspberry Pi 320 all the way to a mini console NS or an emulator console. Okay, this is going to be a real cool video. I'm going to show you step by step how to build this together with the Media Box ENT.com. I'm going to have all the instructions how to build this console. This is going to be nice and cool. Not only you can run NS on it, but also you're going to be able to run Atari and all this thing. And all right, so I leave you right now with the video and all the instructions how to get you emulated running up in a minute. So let me show you not exactly what you need. This will be the basics. So when you have Raspberry Pi, in this case, I use a Raspberry Pi 3, but you can use 3, 2, and also uh, Raspberry Pi 0. Okay, 3 will be more powerful. Uh, you need some type of box. I like this because this kind of looks like a, a mini classic or more like a classic. You can use any box. This is pretty simple. It's real nice to install it. It comes with the dissipated for the chips, a few screws. The only thing you got to do is just match right over there. You put it right there. Just put this box right there. Put the screws. And then technically, it's already built. That's simple, okay? But you can use any other box. This looks cool. Then you need some type of memory. I use 16 gig minimum of VA. I think 16 it will give you a spaceable lot of ROMs. There's a lot of space because those don't require, don't require much space. But you can always put more. And then some type of controller that kind of looks like a Nintendo or looks like in a classic uh, classic controller. This will be the one. And then I want to show you two extra things in case you got an um, old school TV, tube TV, CRT TV. This one way to do it is by using this adapter. It just come in with HDMI. And then here you got the, the analog output, left, right, and the regular video, and, and PAL and NTC, and it powers out with the USB power. And it comes with the cable, but not an actual power supply. You can use one with the phones. This is not an option if you're planning to build this in a, an old TV, or, and since it doesn't require much uh, graphics, this is a it is game, so that would be pretty good. And, and in case you have a, uh, a BGA run around in the house that is another option one of these adapter will be able to power up your BGA monitor by putting this into your output of the Raspberry Pi and then this you connect it right on your BGA uh, the good part of this video I'm going to begin editing the bootloader so this will be able to work on all type of monitors the way I'm going to teach you so it guarantees you to work anywhere you plug it in either on this and this because by default sometimes this little devices will not be enough to power it up but with my video i'm going to show you the trick how to get these little boxes running and make sure this raspberry pi works anywhere okay so the first thing we're going to go into my page is mediaboxent.com. Anyway, the link is right in below the video. And here's what you need all the information. Okay. So first, these are the parts. Okay. And if you're interested or if you see anything that's interesting in the video, you get all the links for the parts. And then we need to get the softwares. You need to get the image writer. This is a good image writer. Click and download it because you don't need to unzip it or anything. It makes it simple. Okay. Then you need to get the RetroPie. Gonna, oh, I'm going to show you right over here. Depends what version you have. If you got version A or B, two or three, zero, you're going to download it and save it. Let's say you desktop and Windows. All right. And then these two is extra. I do recommend you to get SSH. It's going to be life easy to copy your uh, ROMs using SSH. It's uh, to copy to using a USB drive. And this is make easy so you can leave it anywhere you want the raspberry pi again with your desktop or your laptop and upload upload all the roms and no no plus uh no plus plus I always use it in my um tutorials okay so then next we're gonna load the image writer okay that's low we're gonna click and select the image it's gonna be in my desktop right over here we click open 
we wait a day to take my drive. I do recommend you one thing is remove the verification because sometimes it will give you an error and it's always fine. So remove this. You don't need to do any verification. So at this point, you click on it. It's going to be like, take about three minutes. One is done. Okay. You're going to remove the memory and you put it back. This is for Windows. Okay. You remove the memory. Let me show you what happened. I'm going to put it back again because it needs to be detected because we need to do a modification. Okay. So you get this message. That's because the second partition. Make sure you put cancel. Okay. So you put cancel. So go on my computer. It's 58 megs. We see it right there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to modify the config file. We click edit. And now, what this will do to you now, be able to fix the fans problem on the display. You can even read the name. There's a lot of people saying, oh, my fans look smearo. They're too tiny, hard to make it up. This is only happen if you need to work on the actual Raspberry Pi on the shelf mode. Okay, if you, if you quick demo later and, and you want to work there, Going to be hard to make it up even in the beginning when it's going to boot up sometime depends on the manager doesn't sync right and everything looks crazy and this will fix all the few things if you're planning to buy any of those adapters you're going to connect into your bga the bga needs a special signal to activate that if you're going to connect the one you want to use it for a, an analog video this is going to fix that too if you know that this you're going to go crazy and you're trying to figure out why your BGA is not working. Now, you, the only thing you need to do, go to my page. I'm going to make it fast. Just so go down and just match only this part. Actually, um, when the video is done, I'm going to delete this part because you're going to have more information here. That if you're going to overclock, I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So this is only modifications. The HDMI safe mode. Okay. What else we got here? The HDMI force. Okay. One. Group system, node 2, drivers 2, and that will be it. So copy this information, save it, and it's done. After you save it, okay, now you're going to go and put it right into your Raspberry Pi. All right, so finally we got this thing booted up already. So first thing, we're going to config the controller. You plug it in right in the USB, okay? And then what you're going to do now, you're going to press and leave it pressed. For a little bit, this is detect, and now we're going to follow the key. You're going to go up, down, left, right, replace the star, then um, then select A, B, just keep following there. And now the ones in two sides, okay, left, right. Now, after this point, we don't have any more keys, at least the one you see in the video. So, what you do now, just let it press. And leave it pressed for a little bit. It's going to detect the nice stall, and you have to keep going. So we finish config now. So we are in the main menu. So then you see uh, configuration. So we're going to do now. We need to quit. So we're going to go all the way down. We're going to quit, and we're going to go all the way to start the shell. So we click right there. At this point, we're going to type sudo raspy dash config. Okay. Okay, so one thing we're going to do now, we're going to change your password, okay? So you're going to type your password, whatever you want to be, okay? This done. Check the host name. You can replace the host name if you want. That makes it sometimes easy to go to uh, SSH, okay? And we need to click one more thing. We're going to actually overclock it, all right? And one more, we need to activate SSH. That's what we're doing now. We activate SSH, click yes. We reset the system and we're done. Now we can start getting ready to play some games. Finish, press OK. All right, so already started. Now, if you see now, we not only have the configuration anymore, now we have also the Nintendo directory. That's because I went ahead and I put a few ROMs inside. As you add more ROMs, it will open more. If you're going to put a title, you're going to see a title. You put Camelot, you're going to see a Camelot. If you put Amiga, you're going to be able to see the Amiga directory. Just went ahead and put these two runs, okay? So you see the configuration, and then there we can actually play the game. So we're going to execute the game, see how this thing works, okay? 
So in this case, I got two gains. So how can I bind man? We're gonna start one. Okay. If you want to quick the gain any time, and go back to the main screen. You need to press select and start on the same time. Okay. Press those in the same time, and you're gonna go right back to the main menu. So you see, it's working perfect. Okay. There we select um, one player. Remember, if you're going to put another uh, emulator on it, like a, a Thotty, sometimes you need to reconfig maybe your, uh, your controller. You need to go beyond the basic control we did, and that will be a different um, setup. So now, also what we can do now is actually scrape it and look for the actually um, thumbnails. So we can search, and as you see now, we can click and put any picture you want and kind of nice. So when you have a lot of ROMs, you can see all the thumbnails. Just click to whatever you want, click save it. You can do the automatic or scan one by one and you see it right there. It looks real nice. Now, the next step, I'm gonna show you how to copy the ROMs. And I'm gonna show you a physical ROM. I'm gonna make believe us. We're gonna just copy a regular text file, all right? So right now, we don't care. We leave the Raspberry Pi running in the background. I'm just going to go into my Windows, and I'm going to load SSH. Since I knew my previous my IP address, I'm going to just go type the IP address. We're going to log in. We change your password. We're going to use the same password. Username is always Pi. We're not going to change that. Automatically detect that. Okay. So we click OK. And now we see the Raspberry Pi right there. We can see the root directory. Okay. So we click on it, we see there the run, and now you have the list of the, long, the ROMs. Any ROM you put there, it will get activated. So when you reset it, you will have right over there. So pretty easy to copy. Just click, click the directory you want, go into your desktop or whatever will be your, whatever you have your ROMs and the download directory, and just grab it and just move it over. You can just grab it and paste it, or you just can go in and use the arrow to upload it, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to get the ROMs. I'm pretty sure you can search on, on Google, okay? And get the, the ROMs, but that's it. That's it, you see, I just got the text file uh, for the purpose of the video, but that will be the, exactly the same thing. And practically, you guys, you're done. So what do you think? You're gonna be one of this? I'm sure you're gonna be one of these little machines and play those beautiful games back from the 80s. All right, guys, so I shall see you next time, bye.